In this video we're going to explain the difference between what is known as hardwired control unit and microprogram control unit. And as the name suggests, these are two possible strategies to implement the control that is in charge of generating all the control units sorry, all the control signals that are needed to make sure that the data path performs the operations that is uh, required and with the data path we include also the bus and the registers So what we, we know so far about how instructions get executed, if I have a certain instruction, this typically translates into a collection of signal, control signals. We can draw them like an array. This would be an array of multiple signals, and some of them need to be active at certain times. So let's say at, at this time we have these three. In the next step, we have the same array, and in this case, this one this one, this one, and this one are one. So basically this is an array of control signals. And we have several of these steps until we reach the last step of the instruction and we have maybe a one here, a one here, a one here, and a one here. So this sequence of steps taken to execute these instructions reflect the values of zeros and ones that have to be assigned to these control signals. Which block is in charge of doing this? The block in charge of, con of uh, generating these signals is the control unit. So at each time the execution of an instruction the control unit has to generate a sequence, a predefined sequence of these control signals. So Another way of looking at it is that the control unit the control unit has to go or traverse the sequence and change zeros and ones and generate at each point a different array with the values zeros and ones. Now there are two possible strategies to implement this functionality within a pro processor. Number one is with a finite state machine a construction that we have studied a while ago. This construction uses a block of combinational logic that receives input mainly from the instruction register and also from the status of the calculations. This logic then produces an array of signals which are the control signals. And this finite state machine of course has some register here to store the state in which this machine is. Now with this technique over here what we can see is that the control signals correspond to all the signals that are required for executing an instruction and we can foresee how this finite state machine can be implemented such that depending on the value that is present on the instruction register this machine will work through these steps and produce these signals or depending on the machine here will be different sequence of signals but they will implement or they will control the data path such, such that it implements or it executes the instruction loaded in the register. This approach here is what is widely known as hardwired control. The reason why it's hardwired is because all the intelligence to generate this sequence of signals is contained within this finite state machine. The alternative, approach number two, what is known as a micro program. And the idea is very simple, it's basically applying the capacity of the microprocessor again, but this time to generate this sequence of instructions. So the idea is the following we will have the notion of a micro instruction. A micro instruction will have certain fields 
which are called micro operation 1, micro operation 2, a jump if needed, and the destination of it. Now this micro instruction will correspond to a set of fixed control units, sorry, control signals. In other words, is as if one of these vectors that contains all the zeros and ones required to control the data path is then encoded as one much more compact code, so we assign one code per set of signals, and this code is put together forming a micro-instruction. Now what we hear is a sequence of micro-instructions, like the ones shown here, and this sequence of micro-instructions is known as a micro-program. So, what it ends up happening here is that in order for the data path to execute a given instruction, this given instruction will execute a given microprogram. And what we have here is a circuit that reads a micro instruction, generates the control signals, and then execute next micro instruction or jump. So this is another approach to generate the sequence of these arrays of signals. Rather than having a final state machine that contains these steps uh, encoded in this logic, what we have is a program which is called the microprogram and this program is sitting on a memory and the microprocessor, depending on the value of the instruction register, always the instruction register decides to execute this microprogram and this microprogram will be interpreted and translated into the array of zeros and ones that are the appropriate ones, the appropriate control signals for this data path to execute the given instruction. So this in conclusion are the two approaches for designing the control unit of a microprocessor. We either have it hardwired as a final state machine or we followed a microprogrammed approach in which all these arrays are encoded into zeros and ones and these codes are generated and generate the sequence.